Okay, now we want to focus on first principles and limits. First principles, this uh, concept is guaranteed to give you five marks uh, in the exam and limits you could get maybe three or four marks depending on the nature of the question. This concept, em uh, this concept employs the use of algebra to determine a general expression for the gradient or slope of a curve. So what does this mean? It means f pi x, which is the gradient. This is a gradient function. Can be found by saying the limit as h approaches 0. This means approach as x, uh, as h approaches 0, you have f of x plus h minus the original f of x all over the desired value of h. That is the formula for first principles. And you need to, the first thing you're going to do is substitute for this part, specifically for this part. Notation is of paramount importance. If you omit the limits in your working, then you're going to be penalized a mark for notation. And they'll write P-I-N to say this is a pin, penalty in notation. So that means as you go through your working, it is imperative that the limit stays there. You go down as you progress with the limit there until such a time the H disappears from the function. The concept of limit entails the value of the function as the given variable of the domain is made as close as possible to some value of H. The key approach is substitution when applying limits. However, this will depend on the nature of the given expression. If, given, if the given expression is non-fractional, then proceed to get the value of x as x approaches uh, the h. Or, if the given expression is fractional, then the first thing you do is factorize either the numerator or the denominator to give a simpler expression. The simpler expression usually eliminates the option of having h being 0 here. So in this instance, we could not say h is equal to 0 because if we do that, we end up dividing this whole expression by a 0 here. So you have to achieve a point where this h is not 0. That is why we are factorizing. So that usually eliminates the denominator by cancellation. This also removes the uh, possibility of a zero in the denominator that would render the whole expression undefined on the substitution of the value of h. So our first approach is to look at exam type questions on limits. Exam type questions on limits, as you can see, the range of marks varies from 3 to 5. So I'm about to demonstrate how to do it. Question A. Use limits to differentiate the following. Use limits to differentiate the following. So limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 8 all over x minus 2. If you proceed to just substitute in that instance, you are going to get a, an expression that is 0 in the denominator. Because as soon as you say x is equal to 2, you are going to get 2 minus 2, and you get 0 in the denominator. So that is a misconception. So misconception number 1. Do not substitute without first factorizing. Do not substitute without first uh, factorizing. So the first thing you have to do there, there's no factorization needed in the denominator but in the numerator. This is a difference of two cubes. So limit as x approaches 2, you're going to get x minus 2, x squared plus 
2x plus 4 all over x minus 2. The whole point of all this factorization is to ensure that you have cancellation. We talked about it right here. This eliminates the denominator by cancellation right here. So it eliminates it eliminates the denominator by cancellation. And that is exactly what is going to happen. The denominator x minus 2 is going to cancel this one. And as soon as you do that, in the next step, limit as x approaches 2, you are now left with x squared plus 2x plus 4. Since there is no longer the possibility of having a denominator that is 0, you then say limit. x is no longer just approaching 2. x is now equal to 2. So that means you are permitted to now do substitution. That means limit as x is equals to 2 is 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4. And the limit, because we no longer have the approach, there's no need for limit. The limit disappears and we're left with 4 plus 4 plus 4. Answer 12. That is how you would solve the first question there. The main objective of all this was to ensure that when we do eventually substitute x is equals to 2, we don't have the possibility of the denominator being 0. We do not have the possibility of the denominator being 0. That's why we're calling it a misconception. Do not substitute without first factorizing, especially if it's in the fractional format. This is the answer to question A. This is the answer to question A. So let's proceed to do the second one. Part B. We have limit as a x approaches negative 2. And we have x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over 2 plus x. Remember the misconception. Do not substitute without first factorizing. So that means if you had attempted to substitute straight away, you're going to get 2 minus 2, which would render a 0 in the denominator. That is unacceptable. So, always start by looking for something to factorize. In this instance, we would have to factorize the denominator. So, this means next step limit as x approaches minus 2, you're going to get x plus 2 and x plus 1 x plus 2 and x plus 1. Here it was deliberately written as 2 plus x, which is literally the same as x plus 2. You are going to see that you can literally cancel this and that. Those two will cancel each other out. And we are left with, in the next step, limit x. Once we remove this, you just say x equal to minus 2. Then you have minus 2 plus 1. Final answer minus 1. That is the limit. That is the limit. So as soon as we cancel that out, then you can now do substitution. So let's write that out there. Only substitute after cancellation of terms in the numerator and denominator. That's the second one. The key steps are still the same. What must you do? Start by factorizing. After factorization, you are then permitted to substitute. Let's do the next one. Limit. This is C. Limit as x approaches 2 of cube root of x squared plus 3 root of x all over 4 
minus 16x to the minus 1. This one is 5 marks because there are a couple of steps that are needed there. Laws of exponents, simplification, LCD, all those things. You have to bring all those things to the question and you'll be able to solve. So first step, limit as x approaches 2. I'm going to use laws of exponents to change the third into an exponent. This is going to be x 2 over 3 plus 3x to the half all over 4 minus 16 over x. Next step, limit as x approaches 2. I find the LCD of that x 2 over 3 plus 3x to the half all over 4x minus 16 over x. Thereafter, I tip and times. Tip and times limit as x approaches 2. Then this is going to be x 2 over 3 plus 3x to the half multiplied by 4, oh, sorry, x over 4x minus 16. Thereafter, I, I will distribute and I'm going to get limit as x approaches 2 of um, x to the this is going to be 1 so 1 plus 2 thirds 1 plus one, uh, 2 thirds plus 1 is going to be 5 over 3 uh, plus 3 x 3 over 2 all over 4x minus 16. Lastly, I'm going to substitute limit x is equals to 2. This is going to be 2 to the 5 over 3 plus 3 2 to the 3 over 2 all over 4 times 2 minus 16. There's no longer for limit. There's no longer a need for limit because I've already substituted x is equals to 2. Then this is cube root of 32 plus uh, 2 cubed is 8. So that's 3 root of 8 all over minus 8. Lastly, cube root of 32 plus 6 root 8 all over minus 8. That's the final answer. You leave it in that form. This was, was more intense. We had to do LCD and laws of exponents. Then thereafter, we had to substitute. Here, it also wanted you to demonstrate that you know the distributive law. Thereafter, you substitute and you get the answer there. Next one, we've got D. And D says limit. As x approaches 0 of 3 plus h squared plus 5 all over h. Here it's h approaching 0. If you were to do substitution straight away, you were going to get 0, which is not permissible. So what do we do? We expand first. Limit as h goes to 0 of 3 squared, which is 9, plus 6h, plus 8 squared, plus 5, all over h. Next step, collect any like terms. h going to 0. 9 and 5 is going to give us 14 
plus 6h plus h squared all over h. Next step, limit as h goes to 0 of 40 over h plus 6 plus h. This lastly is just going to be limit h is now equal to 0. That will give me 6. Final answer 6. So, wherever there was still h thereafter, all I did was substitute 0. This becomes undefined on its own. This remains 6 because it's independent of h. This one is 0. So, it's really down to 6 plus 0. The limit remains 6. What is key there is to first use the distributive law there. That is key. Then the second step is to break it up because the denominator is a monomial term. It's a single term. So this single term is going to divide into everything that was in the denominator, in the numerator. So h divides into 14, h divides into 6h, h divides into x, uh, h squared. Thereafter, you substitute h approaching 0 and the answer comes out. Lastly, E, we have limit as x goes to minus 2 of x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over x squared plus 4x plus 4. The first thing you are going to notice is that the numerator as well as the denominator is polynomial. So we come back to the point where we are saying you first have to factorize. That is key. So first step, limit as x goes to minus 2. This when you factorize is just going to be x plus 2, x plus 1 all over this when you factorize it's going to be x plus 2 squared x plus 2 squared and then from there this is going to cancel That will cancel and we are left with limit as x approaches minus 2. This cancels that, but not all of it. This was squared. So we're left with x plus 1 over x plus 2. x plus 1 over x plus 2. Lastly, because we have cancelled, we still have the scenario whereby if we substitute minus 2, it's going to be zero there. So the limit of this is undefined. The limit of this is undefined. There's nothing we can do further to that. So what are the key steps? What are the key steps when you're dealing with limits? What are the key steps? In, sum in summary, what must we look out for? Here's what we ought to look out for. I'm going to write down a flow chart. What do we want to do? We want to differentiate. Is it a single linear term? Is it a, lin a linear term or linear expression? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? Is it fractional? If it were fractional, then all you need to do is factorize factorize and then cut and then substitute. What is fractional in this case? The aspect, uh, 
the whole term, the whole expression is fractional, so we usually factorize denominator and or numerator. After we factorize, you cancel and then substitute. These ones, if it is linear quadratic and so forth, all you do is substitute and you get your answer. But if it was fractional, like any of these, if it is fractional like any of these, then you first have to factorize either denominator, numerator, something ought to cancel between the two, then thereafter you substitute.